So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at some more optimization problems. But in these optimization problems, um, the thing that we are optimizing is always going to be the same in each question. We want to optimize the cost of building something, producing something, designing something, whatever. And because we always want to keep cost to a minimum, um, our optimization or the optimal point that we're looking for is always going to be a local minimum. So here's example two here. A manufacturing company is responsible for designing a 500 milliliter can for diced tomatoes. The metal for the sides costs 0 0.001 um, dollar per centimeter cubed. The lid and the base of the can are made out of stronger metal that costs twice as much. What dimensions will minimize the cost of producing the can? So in optimization questions, the first question we always ask ourselves is what is the thing that we need to optimize? What is the quantity that we need to optimize? And in these questions, it's always going to be the cost. The challenge is to figure out a function that tells us the cost of, in this case, producing the can. So to build this can, we need to make the sides and we need to make the top out of metal. So the cost is going to depend, or it's going to be related to, the surface area that we have of this can. So we're going to need a formula for surface area. Now it doesn't tell us in the question what the uh, shape of the can is. We can su assume it's going to be a cylinder here. So the formula for the surface area of a cylinder, 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. That first term, 2 pi r squared, is for the lid and the base. We've got a circle on the top and the bottom. And the second term, 2 pi r h, is for the side or sides. We're given some other information in the question here. We're told that the can is going to be 500 milliliters. And we know from science that uh, 500 milliliters is the same as 500 centimeters cubed. So they're telling us what the volume of our can has to be. So the other formula that we're going to know, need, or the other relationship that we're going to need here is the relationship between the volume, uh, the formula for the volume of our cylinder. So our volume, I'll just write it over here, is pi r squared times h. And these are the two formulas that we're going to have to work with. Now, I said that our cost is going to be related to our surface area. We're not trying to minimize the surface area. We're trying to minimize the cost. So we want to start with our surface area formula and work our cost information into it as well. So what is the cost information that we have? Well, we know that for the sides, the metal costs 0 0.001 per centimeter cubed, centimeter squared, sorry. We know that for the lid and the base, the cost is going to be twice as much, so 0 0.0002 per centimeter squared. How do we work this cost information? Um, how do we combine the cost information with our surface area formula to get our cost function? Well, if we're building something, the cost is always going to be the, uh, the cost of the material times how much of that material that you need. to say amount of material. So in this situation, we have costs for two separate things, and we have a surface area formula that splits nicely into two separate things. We've got separate surface area for the lid and the base, um, and a separate cost for the lid and the base. We've got a separate part of our surface area formula for the side. We've got cost information for the sides. So let's just combine those together. 
For the lid and the base, the cost of material is 0 0.002. The cost, the amount of material that we need is 2 pi r squared. For the sides, the cost of material is going to be 0 0.001. How much material do we need? We need 2 pi r h of it. And there's the first sort of draft of our function for the cost. So this is the function that we want to minimize. We're going to eventually take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve. What problem do we have right now? We've got two variables in our cost function. We've got radius and we've got height. So we want to get this to be a function of a single variable. And that's where this volume uh, relationship is going to come in because we know that our volume is 500 centimeters cubed so we can rearrange that expression 500 equals pi r squared h for either r or h then sub it into our cost function so should we rearrange for r or should we rearrange for h what do you think Kale? H. why do you say h because there's only one of them. We don't have to take a square root. And avoiding square roots and fractions is what we're all about. So we'll rearrange this for h. It's going to be 500 divided by pi r squared. Okay. It should work if you rearrange for r. It's just a little bit messier. So we take that expression that we now have for h, and we're going to sub it into our cost function. And we'll do a little bit of cleanup here at the same time. So this first one will become 0 0.004, just multiplying the coefficients, pi r squared. Our second one here will become point 0 0.002 times pi r, and then we're subbing in for h, 500 over pi r squared. And now that second term, um, we can simplify it a little bit more. We've got a pi and a pi that are going to cancel out. And we can also cancel out one of these r's and one of these r's down here. So we'll rewrite this as 0 0.004 pi r squared plus 0 0.002 times 500, just combining those two coefficients together again, um, gives us 1. And r, oh, we're left with just that r down on the bottom, which I'm going to rewrite as r to the negative 1, rather than 1 over r. And I write it like that just because it makes it easier to take our derivative. Okay, it makes it look more like a polynomial function. There is our cost function, c, c, c. Now we're ready to do our optimization. We want to take the derivative, set it equal to 0, and solve for our radius. So our derivative is going to be Let's see, bring down that 2, 0 0.008 pi r. Um, derivative of that second term, we're going to bring down the negative 1 to get negative r to the negative 2, subtracting 1 from the exponent. And we want to set this equal to 0. So we want to solve for r here. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do this to do the solving here. Um, I think what I would do is I'm going to bring this minus r to the negative 2 over to the right-hand side, and I'm going to change the r to the negative 2 to 1 over r squared. Okay, just taking the negative exponent, putting it down in the denominator. Okay. And I'm going to keep this stuff over here. Zero zero eight pi r. Now to solve this for r, I can cross multiply, which will give me zero point zero zero eight pi r cubed equals one, or r cubed equals one over zero point zero zero eight times pi. So to solve for r, I just need to take the cube root, and I'm good. 
So taking that cube root gets us that r is approximately equal to 3.41. Now, let's just verify that this is, in fact, a local minimum. So we can use the second derivative test. So starting from our first derivative, let's find our second derivative here, which is going to be 0 0.08 i minus, well, let's see, derivative there. Let's see, bring down the negative 2. We get plus 2 times r to the negative 3. a little box in there. Now we want to evaluate this at r equals 3.41. Now just looking at this, let's write it out what it's going to look like here, but plus um, 2 over 0 point, sorry, 3.41 squared cubed. Um, I don't care what the value of this is, right? I just care about whether it is positive or negative. So looking at that, I know it's going to be positive, okay? Because, well, there's no reason it would ever be negative. So I know that my second derivative is going to be greater than zero. And if my second derivative is positive, I've got a local minimum, which is exactly what I was looking for. So I'm good. R equals uh, 3.41 centimeters represents a local minimum for my function. What were we asked in the original question? We were asked for the dimensions. So we've got one of our dimensions, which is radius. We have to go back and find the height. We found this formula here for height. Height was equal to 500 divided by pi r squared, so 3.41 squared. Plugging that in, we get 13.69. So those are going to be the dimensions that minimize our cost here. So the can should be, um, well, let's put it this way, should have a radius of 3.41 centimeters and a height of 13.69 centimeters. <laughs>